handle that glass a lot easier, son, if you took your glove off. I better not, Dad. You know I'm pitching the big game for our school tomorrow, and the glove has to feel right on my hand. He's even been wearing it to bed. <laughs> it helps me when I'm dreaming. Last night, I struck out Mickey Mantle three times. <laughs> you gonna be able to do as well against Middlebury tomorrow? I have to, Dad. If we beat them, we're champions of the whole district. How about coming over this afternoon and watching his practice? Oh, I'd like to, but I'll be out of town on business, son. Jeepers, will you be away tomorrow when we play? No, I'll be back this evening. I wouldn't miss that game for anything in the world. I hope I pitch good. Pitch how? I hope I pitch well. I had a hard time beating out Johnny Brady. I'm sure you'll do a good job, dear. Well, I gotta get to going now. Ma, you look handsome in your new clothes. I like them, too. Aw, oh, jeepers, Mom. Why do you always have to put raw carrots in my lunchbox? Because they're good for you, and you eat them. Okay, but I bet you Whitey Ford doesn't have to eat raw carrots. <laughs> Bye, dear. So long, son. I'd better get going, too. Well, aren't you going to help me clear the table? Golly, honey, Whitey Ford doesn't have to... Uh, <laughs> he's married. He probably does. <laughs> <laughs> That was pretty sneaky, all right. Hey, get back there and I'll show you my hummer. That's what I call my fastball. It really hums. Well, I'd like to hear it, but my wife has asked me to go and pick up some things at Quigley's Market. That's on my way to school. I'll walk with you. All right. Oh, here, Dennis, I'll give you a hand with those. Oh, thanks, Mr. Wilson. You all set for that game tomorrow with Middlebury? Yes, sir. We're having our last practice today when school's up. Want to come and watch? Well, I haven't missed a practice yet. As one of the committee that bought your uniforms, I have a personal interest in that team. Hello, Dennis. John. Hi. Hi, Mr. Finch. Dennis. Here. This is what I want you to do tomorrow. I'll sure try, Mr. Finch. You don't have to worry about Dennis. His curve gets sneakier every day. <laughs> Tell Tommy Anderson his catcher's mitts coming at the post office. He can pick it up here this afternoon. Okay, bye, Mr. Finch. Bye, John. Goodbye. Hi, Mr. Finchley. Oh, hello, Dennis. John. Hi. I, uh, I have a shopping list for you to fill out. Wait a minute. I want to check out our star flinger here. How's the old wing, Dennis? It feels fine, Mr. Quigley. You got time to peg me a couple? Well, I have to make sure and be on time this morning. You see, we're meeting our new school principal, Mr. Spivey. Oh, that's right. He does start today, doesn't he? Yeah, and our teacher says he's real strict. But I could take a couple and then run the rest of the way. Okay, let's have a little warm-up. Want my glove, Mr. Quigley? No, no, you keep it. All I need are my two hands. My throw pretty hard. Won't it hurt your fingers? He doesn't have any fingers. Just thumbs. <laughs> we'll show him. Come on, now. Let's see your Hummer. Ha! Good catch, Mr. Quigley. Well, accidents will happen. <laughs> Accident, my eye. I'm a ball player. <laughs> now, Dennis, I'm going to throw it back with a curve on it. Watch it break. Oh, <laughs> oh that really broke. A <laughs> uh, baseball player. I gotta go now, Mr. Quigley. Bye, Mr. Wilson. Hey, bye, Dennis. I can't understand how that happened. Well, there's nothing that any ham-handed, middle-aged man couldn't have done. <laughs> oh, thanks a lot. Well, let's get back to the grocery business, shall we? Yeah. 
Now, about my shopping list, I want uh, three pounds of apples. And I'll take it. Uh, you better let me do that. You may miss the bag. <laughs> Spivey is on his way to speak to us all now, class. I want you all to be on your very best behavior. I'm always on my best behavior. A lady has to behave herself. That's quite right, Margaret. And you boys remember that you're gentlemen. Tell me, Miss Elmore, technically speaking, are we old enough to be called gentlemen? Of course you are, Dennis. That's a pretty dumb question. Don't you call me dumb Johnny Brady. All right, now, that's enough. Settle down and make me proud of you. As I said before, Mr. Spivey believes in strict discipline. Good morning, Miss Elmore. Good morning, Mr. Spivey. Welcome to our class. Thank you. My name is Albert J. Spivey, and I'm the new principal of this school. All right, children, you may speak. Now, I don't wish to interrupt your studies, therefore my remarks will be brief. All I demand is that you work hard, make good grades, conduct yourselves properly, and give me no trouble. Do you understand? Yes, Mr. Spidey. Good. Now, a few questions to see what progress you have been making. Uh, young man, what is your name? Tommy Anderson, sir. Correction, your name is Thomas Anderson. But everybody calls me Tommy. Well, use of nicknames makes for very sloppy habits. Now, tell me, Thomas, who was president of the United States before President Eisenhower? Harry? I mean, Harold Truman, sir. <laughs> Harry is correct. But you just said uh, that... Don't argue the point. It wastes valuable time. Just sit down. <laughs> uh, young lady, what is your name? My name is Margaret Harrington, sir. And I'm the school cheerleader. And I'm going to be an atomic scientist when I grow up because I have a very high IQ. Oh? Uh, tell me, Margaret, uh, what is the capital of North Carolina? The capital of North Carolina is Raleigh. And the capital of South Carolina is Columbia. And the capital of North Dakota is Bismarck. And the capital of South Dakota is... All, all, all right, that will do. I know all 50 of them. Splendid. Uh, just sit down and let this young man speak. My name is Dennis Mitchell, sir. Hmm, Dennis, uh, tell me, when I use the phrase uh, great American, whose name springs to mind? Mickey Mantle, sir. Who? <laughs> Mickey Mantle. He can really slam the old horse hide. Dennis is the star pitcher of our team, and they're playing a big game tomorrow, so naturally he has baseball on his mind. I have little interest in athletics. They interfere with education. You may sit down, Dennis, and let that young man speak. My name is John Roger Brady III, sir. Well, John, whom do you consider our greatest American? George Washington, sir. Uh, thank you. You may sit down. Miss Elmore, do I have time to tell the children something about General Washington's campaign? Of course, Mr. Spivey. Uh, may I use this map? Please. <laughs> I'll get you a stool to stand on, Mr. Spivey. You're not tall enough to reach. None of your impertinence, young man. What? I re realize I'm somewhat shorter than the average man, but I will not allow rude remarks to be made about it. I wasn't being rude, Mr. Spivey. I just wanted to help. Oh, I'm sure that's true, Mr. Spivey. I've never known Dennis to be impudent. He's a good student and captain of the baseball team. Well, I can tell you this, Miss Elmore. If there's any further impudence from young Mitchell, the team will be without a captain. That will be all, Miss Elmore. All right, children, I heard the bell, too. Just put your papers on the desk as you file out in an orderly fashion. Let him go, Frog. We got work to do. What's up, Johnny? Am I a better pitcher than Dennis Mitchell? Sure you are, Johnny. You bet I am. And I'm going to fix his wagon so I get to pitch against Middlebury tomorrow. How are you going to do that? You'll see. Come on. Here's his paper. I got an idea. And when I get through, it'll take care of Dennis, all right? Boy, Johnny, you sure are smart. 
Can't deny it. What you doing? children this morning we were studying some of our pioneer forefathers tomorrow for your homework I want you all to bring in a short composition on the subject Dennis Mitchell come up here me sir up there what is it mr. Spivey is it Just anything I let me handle this miss Elmore is this your paper young man yes sir that's my arithmetic lesson See, there's my name up at the top. So naturally, this disgusting drawing of me is your work, too? I didn't draw that, Mr. Spivey. Somebody else must have. Oh, Mr. Spivey, I just can't believe Dennis did this. It's not like him. I have the evidence right here, Miss Elmore. For this outrage, you will stay after school and write on the blackboard 500 times, I am sorry for what I did. Stay after school? But I have to practice with the team so we can win the championship tomorrow. Well, I wouldn't let that concern you. You're no longer on the team. But I'm the pitcher, and I've been working awful hard. My decision is final. See that he carries out my orders, Miss Elmore. Tough luck, Dennis. But look at it this way. It's for the good of the school. How come, Johnny? If you pitch the game tomorrow, we might win. With me pitching, we're sure to win. So long. We're sure to lose. You can pitch rings around him. I'm so disappointed, Dennis. I'd much rather lead cheers for you. Thanks, Margaret. I guess the cross Mr. Spivey bears is that he's a short man. I don't know what I can do under the circumstances. If your father would come down here and vouch for you, Dennis, Mr. Spivey should respect the opinion of a boy's father. You want to call him? My dad's out of town on business. Oh, that is too bad. Yeah. Well, I gotta get over to Finch's and get my new mitt, Dennis. I'll see you later. The man is being completely unjust, Mr. Quigley. Just because he's principal, he thinks he's smarter than everyone. No, no, Margaret, let's not be disrespectful. Mr. Spivey must be smart or he wouldn't be principal. Not only that, but he took Dennis off the baseball team and he won't let him pitch tomorrow. I said he might... He what? He took him off the team. What's the matter with that idiot principal, the stupid lemon head? Does he know the team will get murdered without a star pitcher? He couldn't care less. I'll take this one. Does Dennis's dad know about this? No, sir. Miss Elmore said Dennis's dad could probably straighten things out. But Mr. Mitchell's out of town. Oh, fine. Just when the boy needs his dad most. He certainly does. Confound that principal. Maybe if I... Tommy, Tommy, wait a minute. What do you mean he took him off the team? He can't do that. He already did it, Mr. Finch. He's a real tough principal. Punishing a boy for something he didn't do is bad enough. But what about the game tomorrow? Dennis is the best pitcher we've got. He sure is. Middle burial slaughter us. I wish Dennis' dad were here. Miss Elmore said if the boy's father would vouch for him, the principal would probably accept that. Mitchell won't be home until tonight, huh? No, sir. Well, I better get back to practice. Swell it, Mr. Finch. Fine, George. This is a fine. Well, here you are, Dick. Oh, hi, Mr. Wilson. I came over to watch you practice. The boys said I'd find you here. They also said you'd been dropped from the team. Now, is that true? Mr. Spivey got sore at me and made me stay in and write this. I'm sorry. Oh, sit down. I want to hear about this. OK. I'm kind of tired of writing that anyhow, especially since I don't feel sorry. Well, what happened? I guess it all started when he couldn't reach that map up there. You see, he's kind of a short man. Well... Yes, this is he. Who? Dennis Mitchell's father? Uh, yes, uh, 
Henry Mitchell's my name. <laughs> I understand you've taken my boy off the baseball team. Well, I, I do not care to discuss these matters on the phone. But you're perfectly free to see me here at any time. All right, I'll just do that. I'm not far from there, and I'll be right over. Uh, very well. Oh, well, I'll go and talk to that man right now. We'll see about oh, that. No, don't, Mr. Wilson. He's already mad at me. And if you make him any mad at... No, no, relax, relax. I'm not going to make him mad. It's awful easy. I'm just going to tell him that I'm a neighbor of yours, that I know you very well. He won't listen to you, Mr. Wilson. Miss Elmore said if my dad was here, he'd have to listen to dad. Oh, yeah. He would have to listen to a boy's father, wouldn't he? <laughs> Has he met your dad, Dennis? No, sir. Mr. Spivey just started today. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Mr. Spivey, I presume? Yes. Uh, my name is Henry Mitchell, Dennis Mitchell's father. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Mitchell? I've been expecting you. <laughs> oh? <laughs> um, I know the whole story about Dennis, Mr. Spivey. And I dropped in to tell you that you're misjudging the boy. I always crack down hard at the slightest sign of disrespect, and that's what I'm doing with Dennis. Uh, uh, but this picture, Mr. Spivey, Dennis would never draw a thing like that. Besides, the school needs him to pitch that baseball game tomorrow. We've already been over that, Mr. Mitchell. I told you, Dennis is off the team. You told me? <laughs> Mr. Spivey, I'm Henry Mitchell, Dennis's father. I came to... <laughs> John, what, what are, are you, you doing, doing here? here? I'm here to talk about my son, Dennis. Dennis Mitchell. Now, Mr. Spivey and I are very busy, so why don't you run along? Uh, pardon me, but did you call him John? Well, of course I did. That's his name. Uh, well, it is my name, John Henry Mitchell. Uh, most people call me Henry. Dennis calls me Dad. <laughs> See, did you phone me a while ago, Mr. Mitchell? Yes, I did. I called and said I'd be right over. <laughs> oh, you knothead! Why don't you stay out of this? Why don't you? I can handle this better than you can. <laughs> well, this is a very interesting situation. Uh, sit down, Mr. Mitchell. You too, Mr. Mitchell. <laughs> Good. Well, gentlemen, I have long been an ardent student of biology, but this is the first time I have ever heard of a boy who has two fathers. Now, could one of you kindly explain this to me? Well, it's very simple, Mr. Spivey. This man is confused. The important thing is Dennis. Now, you're mistaken about that boy of mine. All right, all right. I can see this is getting us no place. Well, fortunately, there is one person who can settle this. Dennis. You're right. I'll go and get him. Uh, you sit right there, Mr. Spivey. Uh, I'll talk to him. We will all go talk to Dennis. <laughs> you're messing this all up. Why don't you go home? What? And admit that I'm a liar? I don't know, sir. Oh, after you, gentlemen. <laughs> Well, Dennis, your old dad is back again. Yes. Dennis, both these confused gentlemen claim to be your father. I want to know who they are. Well, I... I... Mr. Spivey, there's a man here looking for you. Oh. He says it's important. Well, uh, let's hold this little drama right where it is, gentlemen. I'll be right back. <laughs> yes, you're looking for me. I'm Mr. Spivey. Oh, yes, Mr. Spivey. My name's Henry Mitchell. What? Dennis Mitchell's dad. I believe there's been a little misunderstanding about that a fine... A little misunderstanding? Well, that is the prize understatement of the season. So come right in, sir. Join our family group. <laughs> Steve, what are you doing here, Finch? Oh, I, I didn't know there was anyone else here. I, I came to see my boy, Dennis Mitchell. Oh, there you are, son. Uh, I'd better get back to work. <laughs> Your name is Finch. Hmm? No, it's, uh, it's a nickname. My name's really Mitchell, Henry Mitchell. <laughs> Sit down, all of you. 
Now, I don't know what this farce is all about, gentlemen, but we're going to find out, aren't we? Now, each of you claims to be Mr. Henry Mitchell. Now, will the real Henry Mitchell please stand up? <laughs> Mitchell can't stand up, Mr. Spivey. My dad's out of town. Well, at least there's one honest person here. They're all honest, Mr. Spivey. Honest they are. I don't know why they all said that they were my dad. Uh, I'll tell him, Dennis. I'm uh, John Wilson, a neighbor of Dennis's. Uh, you see, I, I bought the house from my brother, and I've lived there for some time, and... Well, I just know that Dennis couldn't have done what you accuse him of. Just how do you know, Mr. Wilson? I have his word, for one thing. That's all anybody needs from Dennis. That boy never tells a lie about anything. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm Quigley, uh, Quigley's Market. <laughs> I'm Lawrence Finch, the druggist. Now, Dennis is a good boy. What's more, he's the most honest boy in school. If his father were here, we wouldn't have jumped in like this, but his dad's out of town. Honey, I'm home. Oh, hello, dear. I didn't expect you till dinner time. Hi, sweetie. How'd things go? Oh, fine. I got through early, and it's only an hour's drive home. Where's Dennis? Oh, he isn't home from school yet. I suppose he's still practicing for the big game tomorrow. I think I'll go pick him up while I've still got the car out. Good. Maybe you'll get a chance to meet his new principal. Hey, that shouldn't do Dennis any harm to have his father make friends with the head man. <laughs> So you see, Mr. Spivey, we just had to do something for Dennis. Yes. But I suppose we've made it worse for him with all this. That's okay, Mr. Wilson. I don't even mind being sorry 500 times when I've got such good friends like you all are. Gentlemen, I... Well, I'm beginning to think maybe I have misjudged Dennis. Everybody believes me but you, Mr. Spivey. Well, it does seem that any boy for whom three grown men will go through all this lunacy must be all they say he is. Well, of course he is. But well, that's what I've been saying. Yeah, then you will put him back on the team? Dennis, you're back on the baseball team as of right now. Wow. Oh, that's wonderful. Oh, boy, that's great, Mr. Spivey. I'll pitch my arm off tomorrow. You just watch me. Well, I'll find out who did draw this picture, and when I do, they'll hear from me. Well, they I should. Do think yes. Well, I think I better get back to store. Yeah, I guess I better get back before the potatoes rot. <laughs> right, I'll run along too. Come on, Dennis. I'm very glad everything turned out all right, Mr. Spivey. Well, so am I, Mr. Wilson. And Dennis, I'll be there tomorrow rooting for you. That's great, Mr. Spivey. <laughs> Come along. Come along. Oh, I almost forgot. I've got to go pick up my things. They're in my locker. Lead the way. Excuse me, Mr. Spivey. Yes? Welcome to our school, Mr. Spivey. My name is Henry Mitchell. My son Dennis is one of your pupils. No, not another one. <laughs> well, what kind of business did you leave to come over here, sir? A barber shop, maybe? A filling station? Uh, no, I... Well, Mr. Henry Mitchell the Fourth, we've had our little joke for this afternoon, haven't we? As a matter of fact, it has taken up half my afternoon, so if you will excuse me, sir, please, I'd like to get back to work. Thank you. <laughs> I think so. I'm not sure. He was so confused. What happened? Well, I don't know what happened. I just walked in and said, Mr. Spivey, I'm Henry Mitchell. Next thing I knew, I was out the door. And you uh, just walked in and said, I'm Henry Mitchell? Well, sure. I am, you know. You're the fourth one today. <laughs> Keepers, it was funny. We've been reading in American history about our forefathers. And today, I really have four fathers. <laughs> we'll tell you, we'll tell you. <laughs>
has been a Screen Gems film production.